I know there's been a lot of requests in the last few weeks, so we've been kind of going with those. Um, yeah, and then we can kind of go from there. And yeah, we can start right now, actually. We can just do that. I know there's, yeah, only a few people on, but let's try to make this a bit easier here. So we have my little presentation thing here. So I'm just gonna move the phone here. So we have ankle sprains. And if we go to the next slide, we have, so ankle sprains are the most common injuries sustained in physical activity, one of the most common, and sport. 85% of all ankle sprains result in an inversion mechanism, so that means, you know, twisting your ankle that way. Uh, that's in the inversion motion. Mainly involve lateral ligaments, the ligaments of the outside of the ankle, which I'll show you in a second. Common symptoms are pain, swelling, limited osteokinematics, which just means range of motion. Loss of dorsiflexion, which is this motion coming up. Um, yeah, partial weight bearing, meaning you can't bear full weight through your foot and lower extremity. And bruising, bruising is, can be common quite a bit too. So um, causes occur during a rapid shift of body center of mass over the landing or weight bearing foot. So when you're on an unstable base of support, when your body's trying to fight for balance, Ankle rolls outward while foot turns inward. Um, so if ankle rolls outward while foot turns inward, like that motion again. Uh, previous elasticity and resilience rarely returns, meaning if you keep getting injured, it doesn't go back to 100% in terms of the ligament resi resiliency um, or being that elastic component, right? Elastic band stretches just as far as you stretch it and then goes right back to the normal length. If you use an elastic band too much or stretch it out too much, over time, it doesn't go back to the original um, elasticity, right? It doesn't go back to the original position. So what we wanna do is avoid these injuries because if you keep getting injured, it doesn't um, get back to 100%. There's a greater level of plantar flexion. So the greater level of the plantar flexion, the higher likelihood of a sprain. So being this down motion plantar flexion. Um, yeah, previous sprains is the highest predictor of future sprains. We see this commonly um, with injuries, is if you have an injury, the best predictor is if you had that injury before in the past. Dominant leg is two and a half, or sorry, 2.4 times more vulnerable to sprain than the non-dominant, which is a very um, interesting fact. So dominant side, more likely to get injured. Argument could be that if you play soccer, for instance, you're more likely to use it, so more likely to get injured. There's a grading system that we use for ankle sprains. Grade one represents microscopic injury, so very minor sprain, less than 50% of fibers. This is where you get pain, your mobility is fine, your strength is fine, your weight bearing is fine. It's not affecting your daily activity or exercise. Uh, grade two is macroscopic stretching or tearing, so larger tears up to grow greater than 50% of the fibers. This is where you get the swelling, you get the bruising, you get quite a bit of pain. Um, you're able to partial weight bear, but now you can't do your sport or your job. Uh, grade three is a complete rupture. So grade three would be like you fully rupture that ligament and then oftentimes you don't even get pain, that much pain with it. It just pops and there's no weight bearing, instability and um, yeah, that's, that's quite a, a serious injury. If you look at this anatomy time, so there's the ankle. You have the medial ligaments of the inside of the foot. You can get, those are sprained as well, but just like the previous stat said, 85% of the time it's the lateral. So the ligaments on the outside. So yeah, you're gonna, we're gonna focus more on the lateral ankle sprains. Um, you have three key ligaments. You have the um, anterior talofibular ligament, you have the calcaneofibular ligament, and you have uh, the posterior talofibular ligament, which would be back there, which it doesn't show. Um, the most common ligament to tear is the anterior talofibular ligament. That one is the most common one that sprains. You have three ligaments that support the outside of your ankle, so the lateral aspect. Um, yeah, and then you go to the next slide here. So ankle ligaments lateral. So here's another picture of them. You have the anterior talofibular ligament here in the front, and then you have the calcaneofibular ligament here, and then the posterior 
uh, talofibrillar ligament there. So that is the lateral aspect of the ankle. The inside, the medial aspect is quite heavily supported. So that's why you don't see too many injuries on the medial aspect. Um, yeah, so the talocrural joint right here. <clears throat> so you can see that this joint kind of makes that plantar flexion dorsiflexion motion. Um, and so you have two joints in the ankle that, that make the different motion. So you have plantar flexion being down, um, dorsiflexion coming up, inversion coming in, eversion coming out. So those motions in the ankle um, produce all the motion. So the subtalar joint is going to be plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. And then you have the subtalar joint, which is the inversion eversion. So where that line is right here, um, that's the subtalar joint. Recurrent sprains results in mechanical or functional deficits chronic ankle instability, degenerative changes, chronic pain, and loss of proprioception. So this is the people that are frequently spraining their ankle. Um, and you can see all those things you definitely don't want. You don't want chronic pain. You don't want instability. Um, you want to be able to heal from this and to get back to your regular activity. So um, that being said, the greatest amount of pain reduction takes place within the first two weeks. If any of you have had ankle sprains, you know that um, in the first couple of weeks, like you, you notice big reductions in pain typically, right? So the first couple of days, yeah, you might not notice a difference, but as time goes on, um, the pain does decrease significantly. And then it's interesting after two weeks, it is slower. So 33% of individuals still report pain after one year. That's interesting as well that, um, ankle sprains can take quite a bit of time to heal. And then oftentimes people still have some sort of issues in the future. Um, and this is a concern because residual pain equals fear avoidance. So it means that you're not going to be doing certain activities if you still have pain, which is fair. You're afraid that it's going to get hurt more and then decrease self-efficacy. So you don't think you can do much, right? So you kind of have this bad feedback loop where you just keep getting pain, you keep avoiding things and you keep feeling bad about yourself that you can't, you think you can't do these things. Um, so that's what we want to break. That's why I want to start physio initially right away to get you moving so you know you can move well. <clears throat> and the principle that we use um, commonly is NICE or RICE. There's lots of different ones people here. So NICE would be N for NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So Advil, you have ice, compression, elevation. Those are what you're gonna do in the initial phase of a sprain, right? So the first few days, you're gonna be cycling between those things. Another interesting one is police. So protection, optimal loading, integrated control exercises. Um, so that can include joint mobilization with the physio, plantar massage. You can do this at home yourself and progressive resistive exercise. This is shown through research in that article down at the below um, is the best way of approaching things. So you have, if you look at this, you have different levels. So this is part of the biopsychosocial model. You have different circles representing different things. So you have the individual cells, you have tissues, you have the body, you have self and society. So all these have to kind of work together. So at the cellular level, nice and easy. Um, they control both mechanical and chemical stimuli for appropriate perception of cell and tissue function via mechanotransduction. So that is very important um, at the initial phase, right? You want to restore structure and function. Then you go to the next one, you have tissues. So police and return to motion, enhanced perception of body tissues, integrated in body motions, movements, integration of cells into the component health of tissue and organs. So the goal is to enhance structure and function. You come outside even more, so the body now. You have coordination training, influence perceived ability, self-efficacy and resilience in functional activities, integration of the body into a unified self, goals return to functional activity. And then you go one step further, getting into society to support specific things, a team setting, um, enhanced perception of self in the context of their societal role, right? So this model, the biopsychosocial model, shows that everything's tied together. You have biology, psychology, um, physiology, right? So all of this has to work um, together. So this is a nice little system in which you can use to treat. Um, I think this is very important, especially if you're have an injury. This could be applied to pretty much anything, right? Not just the ankle, but the shoulder, hip, that kind of stuff. All about balance training. So another study shows 
uh, balance training and proprioceptive exercises with people with um, ankle sprains. So aim is to stabilize joints, can be used to prevent or treat an injury. Systematic reviews have shown positive results with regard to incidence and reduced the incidence of ankle sprains by 38%. So in this study, they ran individuals through a balance program. So you can see 38% reduction is huge. Like that's definitely worth taking a, a closer look at. Um, yeah, so that's a very important fact. So the slideshow is pretty short, <laughs> which is fine. Um, definitely wanted to get into more discussion today and talk about what kind of happens with rehab in more detail. I'm just gonna stop the screen sharing. Yeah, there we go. So we wanna talk about what you can do for rehab. So the biggest thing with all those studies is to, to get early intervention, right? So if you have the first two weeks is the biggest pain reduction, you wanna take advantage of that time. So as a physio, if someone comes in with this ankle sprain of any type, we wanna rule out any serious injury. So if it's a rupture, that's serious. Um, if it's a fracture, that needs to get managed at a hospital. So you wanna be able to screen people and, and see if their injuries are, are serious or not so serious. Uh, that's the first thing we do. So if you have like a lot of point tenderness, like it's very, very, very tender to touch with light pressure um, and you can't weight bear at all and the pain's just through the roof, then it's probably time to go to the hospital and <laughs> get some more help, right? So we rule out a serious injury, like a rupture or a break, something that needs to be managed um, at, in an emergency department. And then after that, we start figuring out, well, is it a grade one, two, or three? And then from there, we develop a treatment plan. So if someone has a very serious injury, like a fracture or a suspected fracture, we refer to the hospital or their family physician. Um, and then obviously get them to immobilize it, to, to use a boot or just to not bear any weight. That's usually when I tell someone, hey, you need crutches and you need to go to the hospital or the doctor. Um, sometimes individuals come to us with crutches and their ankle sprain isn't so significant. So I tell them, hey, let's, let's try to wean off the crutches. I won't tell somebody, hey, just, you don't need them, just take them away. Um, yeah, so the biggest thing that I see with ankle sprains is the faster you can get back to full weight bearing, the faster the progress is, the better the outcomes are. Once you can get weight on it safely, um, then kind of continue from there. So when people get are told to not weight bear for two weeks and they have crutches and a boot, then you have longer recovery if the injury is not so serious. If it is serious, yes, it's needed. Um, so what I'm saying to people now is if, if, if you notice pain, swelling, bruising, that kind of stuff, you can weight bear a little bit, then just try to, try to hobble around a little bit. If you don't feel safe, then yes, use crutches, or if it's just way too much pain, then use crutches. Um, so you wanna get people back to weight bearing as soon as possible. I think that's one of the most important things. So if you follow the framework of a physio, you want to increase mobility. So manage pain first. So if it's acute, it just happened, you wanna teach someone how to manage pain. So then you have that nice principle, you have um, NSAIDs, you have ice, compression, and elevation as a common thing to use. So you wanna cycle between those. Once the pain's managed in that early phase, in the first week, you wanna increase mobility. So you want to increase full mobility. Once you get full mobility, then you start strength training, bearing more weight, and then you go into more functional activities, proprioception, balance, and then you would go to activity-specific or sport-specific exercise, um, whatever that sport might be. So I think that's the best way to kind of go about an ankle sprain um, and, and going in that stepwise direction. I think that's very important to do. So in terms of mobility, the common feature of an ankle sprain is that dorsiflexion, so coming up motion, that's limited the most. Lots of different ways to do it. I often tell patients to either do a calf stretch. So if you're looking at a calf stretch, you are, you have one, one leg back. I'm gonna turn the laptop as well so Stephen can see. So you have one leg back, one leg forward, bending forward keeping the back leg straight, keeping the heel planted on the ground, feeling a good stretch in the back of your calf. So that's gonna help with dorsiflexion, so holding that three times, 30 second holds. Um, then you have a wall, a really good one. So I'll give a few per, per exercise. You have needle wall. So if you have the wall here, I'm gonna turn this a little bit. 
Good. So if you have your foot right over here, right, so I, I touch my knee to the wall, easy peasy. I bring the foot back, touch the wall again, and kind of keep going until you can't do it anymore. So right here, I'm barely touching it. That's where I want to hold my stretch, right? So that's going to help that dorsiflexion. Holding for 30 seconds, repeating three times. That would help with dorsiflexion quite a bit. I like that exercise because you're bearing weight um, and it's very functional. So any exercise that you're bearing weight, it's kind of a bonus. So you, let's say you got your mobility back, right? There's lots of different ways to do mobility exercises. Um, yeah, you can use some bands as well for some strengthening. So if you're getting into the initial stages of strengthening, um, not too difficult to do these exercises. Even for mobility ABCs, right? Tracing out the alphabet with your foot A, right? B, those are good to do, relatively safe. And that kind of motion will help with swelling too. So if you have a lot of swelling, you'll know that if you do more motion, more mobility exercises, you'll have better, better range of motion. Um, if we go through now some strengthening exercises, so going from your pain's managed, better managed, you do your mobility exercises, your mobility is getting better, um, and then we're going to do some strength exercises. So if I point this down a bit, so we have, right, so we have a couple of different motions, right? So we have inversion and eversion. So if you're doing eversion exercises, if you look at my left foot, I'm going outwards and inwards, out and in, out, slowly in. Tricky motions to perform, that's eversion strength. If now I cross over my foot and then bend inwards and outwards, in, well, get a little bit more resistance here, in, like this, there's your inversion, doing for three sets of 10, for instance, right? So doing some early strengthening. For plantar flexion, I like doing eccentric exercise. So if you're looking at plantar flexion, so heel raises coming up and then slowly down, up, going down slower than up. That's easy, right? So you can do it on one leg, up and down, up and down. Lost my balance, good for balance too, support perception. Up and down, you can do it on a stair, so if we go back here, if that one's easy, you could do it off a step, right? So I have my foot on the step, up, down slow, up, down slow, up, down slow. So I get a bit of a burn there, which is good. My body's working <laughs> pretty hard. So that's a good exercise. So let's say now you have close to full strength or, or better strength. Now you want to get into the weight bearing stage, right? So if you want weight bearing exercises, you can do squats, you can do lunges. I like those exercises for strengthening. Um, squats, lunges, great for, for ankle, knee, hip. It's a good dynamic exercise that works on everything. That's why as a physio, I try to get people weight bearing as soon as possible, as safely as possible, and when the pain's managed, then you can see progress kind of go pretty quick. Then you get to have fun, right? So some of the exercises you could do with bands are fun, uh, but I think there's a getting on your feet and doing some, some more meaningful activity would be a bit better. So if I grab, let's say a ball, and a BOSU ball. So if you have a BOSU ball, great. If you don't, you can stand on a pillow don't have to um, you don't have to use any fancy equipment so if you got a pillow sponge anything like that uneven surface is what we're looking for uh, I'm gonna grab a ball so what we could do is have a ball here you could you know bring the ball out bring the ball down side to side right keeping your balance then what you could do is, and hopefully I do it, I do it okay, is you balance on one leg, right? So balancing on one leg, bring the ball forward, right? Lost my balance, bring it down, bring it sideways. I'm gonna blame these shoes for my balance because it's not so good right now. Even tossing the ball, right? Tossing it up and down, tossing it against the wall. The best would be to now, play with a friend so if you 
have somebody around standing on one leg, tossing a ball back and forth. That's more of the external environment, right? So you don't have control over that. So if you do heel raises, you have direct control um, over your environment. You're setting your speed and things like that. When you have external cues, a little bit better because you have unexpected things that happen, right? Someone passes a ball with you while you're balancing on one leg, that's, and it's going in different directions. So I always tell patients, hey, like get the person that's passing you the ball to pass in different directions, right? Go high, go low, left, right, that kind of stuff. Um, really good for neurodynamic, neuroplasticity. Um, yeah, that's a good way to, to kind of look at the ankle, a very effective way. So you want to first manage pain so you can use that um, model in which it's nice. So NSAIDs, you have um, ice, compression, elevation, right? So you use that. There's also the easy principle. So that's an external ankle support for one year. Uh, that's what easy stands for, up to one year. So um, research does show some benefit with ankle braces or taping, strapping. The only message like from that I tell people, and this is shown through research, is now they only want people to use that external support during a strenuous activity or what recreates the symptoms. So if it's painful with sport, then use a brace with sport. Don't use it for daily activity or walking. Then it shows muscles can get weaker, so you don't want to do that. There's also that police principle that we talked about. So protection, optimal loading, and integra integrated control exercises. That's going to be very important. So using those principles is pretty shows quite a bit of improvement. Um, commonly, how we do things is, is in that stepwise direction. So, right, you have the the nice principle in the first week or so, first few days, right, icing, resting to a certain extent, elevating, managing that acute pain. Once that's managed, then okay, now let's do some mobility, right? So using that police principle. Um, integrated controlled exercises, getting weight bearing. That's what you really want to do. Um, and then going into the next stages is now getting more strength. So doing those heel raises, doing some squats, doing some lunges, seeing how that goes. That goes well. Next time, okay, now let's do some balance exercises, right? Always into incorporating some balance or proprioceptive activity, doing that. And then, uh, then finally going into more sport specific or activity specific things. So. Yeah, depending on the sport, like basketball, high rate of ankle sprains, volleyball, quite a bit I've seen. Um, and that one article that we looked at briefly was that balance training helped reduce injury or sprains by 38%. So if you're an athlete or you're active, whatever you're doing, I think it's a good idea to throw in some um, balance training, right? So that is very important. So. Yeah, that's ankle sprains in a nutshell. Um, so ruling out if it's serious first thing and then going from there, right? So you don't wanna be taxing your body too much. Um, yeah, so are there any questions? I know that was a bit quicker than usual. Um, I'm still gonna post this online as well so people can take a look at it that didn't have a chance to, to, um, to attend. Any questions from, I know there's only a couple people on here, but that just gives you more, more things to ask. I know it's quite simple, like there's lots of complicated exercises you can do, but that's, that's pretty much the strategy for, for ankle sprains and quite a few different types of sprains too. So um, something I've seen with quite a bit, quite a common injury. And usually I've had pretty good success with it. So I've seen some pretty nasty sprains, some minor sprains um, using the stepwise thing, you're still taking it easy, but you can get back to activity um, very quickly. So where can I get these videos? So if you look at YouTube and just type in Pursuit of Motion Physio, uh, our channel's there. So then you can just hit our logo. As you can subscribe if you want, so you'll, you'll get updates. But yeah, so Pursuit of Motion Physio on YouTube would probably be the best uh, place to go to, to look at our videos. Um, yeah, we have like, I think there's probably 29 or 30 just on these kind of topics that we do every day. Yes, on YouTube, yeah. So yeah, we have topics for, for 
from chronic pain to different running, no problem. Thank you for, for attending. Um, so yeah, we have running injuries, we have uh, chronic pain conversations, we have some people that come from different provinces as well, some colleagues of mine, um, and we present on different things. So this will be recorded and presented. So yeah, we want people to, to look at it, to to learn from it, and then give us feedback as well. So any more questions? I know there's a couple people on, so. I'll wait a couple of minutes, and then if there's any questions about sprains, um, yeah, I like to keep it simple. So if you focus on those stepwise things, right? Mobility, strength, functional activity, balance, that kind of stuff, proprioception, you can't go wrong. Granted, I've seen some pretty serious ones. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh because that's not funny, but um, I find that most people do pretty well with these injuries. Uh, the one year mark, I've seen people with with issues. The ones that I've seen more commonly are the ones that might not get any rehab advice from the beginning and how to progress activity, and then you can get into those loops. Can permanent damage happen if there if there force movement after a sprain yeah so permanent damage can happen with a sprain if especially so if you have a sprain and then you do i think the question is doing activity too early so if you have a sprain and then you now get active too early yes you could put that ligament in more jeopardy if it's compromised already then the chances of re-injury and then a more severe injury is gonna be higher. So you don't you wanna keep it safe in terms of not doing the sport or the activity that you got sprained. Um, yeah, so forceful movements can cause permanent damage, right? You get a significant ankle sprain, the it doesn't heal 100%, so to speak. So if you look at the elasticity of the ligament, it doesn't go back to 100%. So it is compromised. That's why we do a lot of that strengthening and balance activity to now use strength to stabilize the joint, right? So balance and stability is or balance training, proprioceptive training does show improvements in stability. That's often one thing that can get missed. So I always include it, uh, whether it's on both feet, one foot, BOSU ball, doesn't matter. Whatever the activity is, trying to get close to that um, and, and go from there. So that's a good question. But yes, permanent damage can occur. You have more sprains, it's never gonna be 100%. That's not bad news, that just means you now you have to focus on certain things, body mechanics and things like that, proprioception, balance, um, but that's a good question. And Shane is here, hello Shane. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, you kinda have to be careful. And that works with a lot of tissues in the body, so you wanna keep it, that's what we mean by rest or protection, is to, now prevent further, and just like concussion, right? You you go back to sport too early, then you can do some very serious damage. So it's not like you double the timeline for healing. You could triple it, quadruple it. You could never get back into that activity again if you're t if you're taking too many risks. That's why that stepwise direction for me is is very good, right? If you take five days or six days at best, progressing through. And hello, good sir, to you, Shane. Um, yeah, if you, if you use that stepwise direction and controlling the increase in activity, then you're going to prevent issues, right? So if you're safe about it and progress, you'll notice, okay, I did this, now it hurts. Okay, now I need to focus on that stage, right? So if strengthening is hurting quite a bit, then you just keep strengthening. Um, and you don't going to progress to going on one leg on a BOSU because that's going to compromise the area. Because when you do have a sprain, you can get secondary strains to the musculature too. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Those are good questions. I'll wait a couple minutes and then we can end it if need be. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we should do more longer exercise classes in these. I think it's good to get the theory down because a lot of people know injuries well, but in terms of activity and exercise, but I think it's important to know the um, anatomy, the physiology, the reason why. Yeah. Just talk about training up the chain. Okay, so what I was saying, 
about that was going into the different stages of the healing chain. I know you know what those are, but um, using the principles of like, let's say the first few days using the NICE principle. So NSAIDs, if, if you can take them, ice, compression, elevation, right? Your first few days and then transitioning into um, NICE and police. So going into police, so that's gonna be protection, optimal loading, integrated controlled exercises, right? So that could be stretching, progressive resistive, exercises, joint mobilization, plantar massage. So that's going to be the second phase and then going into uh, more advanced exercises, right? So once you get mobility, then you focus on strength, um, working on balance, proprioception, and then going into more sports specific activity. So using that principle um, is, is very effective. There's also nice and easy. So nice, I already explained, easy being external ankle support for up to one year. So Research is favorable on using supports and braces only when indicated. So if you're walking and running fine and there's no pain, but when you play your sport, there's pain, then yes, use the brace when you do your sport, but don't use it when you're pain-free. So if you're running and there's no issue, don't use a brace, that shows weakness. Um, I know dorsiflexion as well. So if you, the faster you return dorsiflexion to within normal limits, there's less rate of re-injury. Um, there was another article that looked at basketball and quarters. So they found that majority of injuries happen in the third or fourth quarters after halftime being fatigued, right? So you, um, things aren't as stable. So that's an important thing to take home. But yeah, the stepwise progression is managing the pain. So using nice, um, and easy if you want, and then shifting into the police. So you're shifting into into what is i keep looking because i keep <laughs> police protection optimal loading and integrated controlled exercises and then going into more specific activity so i think that's that's the best way to to go through things right because if you take too long to start rehab you have residual pain and like i said that would would could cause some fear avoidance and then some decreased self-efficacy and then it kind of feeds back and then you can get more serious things like chronic pain um, and you don't want to, to develop those, right? So you want to get, that's why I tell people get back to activity a bit sooner because then they get back to activity, it's uncomfortable, but they're like, hey, I can do it. And then that in itself kind of reinforces their actual ability and then they kind of go from there and, and not have any issues after that. So yeah, yeah. And the interesting fact is the greatest amount of pain reduction takes place within the first two weeks of a sprain. And then the other super interesting fact is 33% of individuals still report pain. And this doesn't mean significant pain, but they still report issues after one year. Um, and I've seen people that, I worked with one gentleman who was in his 40s, played a lot of hockey. Um, and sprained his ankle while playing hockey several years before I saw him and he's like yeah ever since I sprained it never been the same always had some issues but he's like I still play I still do this and we treated him pretty effectively it took a little bit of time but he got back to, to hockey and daily activity without any issues no pain so um, but he was very hesitant right he had a fear avoidance he said hey I don't want to skate very hard I don't want to play hard um, and then the, the last year he took the year off hockey because it, it was just bothering him too much. So it took him a couple months to get back to hockey. So I looked at his ankle and said, hey, you can get into sports specific activity. You can get some skates on. Um, and that kind of made him nervous. So then we, we, we did like a slow, well, a, a slow-ish return to sport. So even getting on some skates at home and walking around. And then, yeah, once he got the skates on and went on the ice, he kind of played around for a couple of days and then was, was good to go. So he, he did quite well. And all of it was he had reduced dorsiflexion, so restored that. Um, did some proprioceptive exercise, so BOSU ball at home, he just used a pillow. And yeah, it wasn't even an overly complicated treatment program. I think the basics usually work the best. Um, yeah. Any more questions? I can answer any more that you have. 
I'm, a, again, a physio that likes to stay the basics and keep things simple um, and not overly complicated, complicate things because that can make A, things hard for me and B, things very difficult for the patient. If I'm explaining things that might be above and beyond what's going on, then they're going to be, they might even be more scared that, hey, I'm going to have pain for a while and then you got your fear avoidance patterns and we don't want to develop those. So with the ankle, weight bearing as quickly and as safely as you can and then go from there, progress activity as able. Which again, is like pretty much like any other injury, but um, the ankle is a bit unique because it's so commonly injured. And ligaments don't go back to 100%, so muscles and things like that can be used to stabilize the ankle joint. Yeah, so I know a lot of people are back to work too, so we might have to shift time so you can give me recommendations or suggestions. We still want to do this live thing, um, the idea is also maybe to switch it to like a Saturday or a Sunday when things are a bit busier and that way people can kind of think all week about questions and, and have one dedicated uh, time slot for the week. So let us know for suggestions. Um, yeah, I'll look at some slides, Shane, and I'll see if there's anything that would be of interest to you. Shane's a physio, a great physio. so. <laughs> Um, I want to give them the good stuff. And there's articles I have too, and you can email me, Shane, if you want to um, talk about it. So actually one thing I'll show again would be the framework here. So if I talk about the stages and things like that, I found this in an article from 2019 called, let's see here. A perceptual framework for conservative treatment and rehabilitation of ankle sprains, an evidence-based paradigm shift. Very interesting article to me as a physio. I'm gonna pop up one of the slides since we have a bit of time. So I talked about that police and um, ice or nice and easy. So I'll show you what that means here <laughs> before I make things overly complicated. So you have this framework and then Shane or anybody can ask me for the article. So you have this biopsychosocial model. So you can see the cells, tissues, body, self, society. So all of these play in part, right? So you got to progress um, through those systems. And I like this because it kind of follows how I treat to some extent. So you have cells. This is where you take it nice and easy. So nice being NSAIDs, ice, compression, elevation, and easy easy being external ankle support for up to one year, right? So this is now your, your inflammatory markers, things like that, the acute phase. And then you go to the next step, tissues. Um, you have police and return to motion, right? So things are managed. Let's get some motion. So enhanced perception of body tissues, integrated in body motion movements, integration of cells into the component health of tissue and organs. So the goal is to enhance structure and function. <clears throat> right, so then now you progress uh, to the body. Sorry, yes, you progress upwards, body, so coordination training, influence perceived ability, self efficacy, and resilience in functional activities, um, integration of the body into a unified self, right? So, to getting back to functional activity and then now going up, going back into sport specific exercise. So, now you have confidence, self efficacy. You have strength, range of motion, you're managed acutely and you kind of progress from there. So I like this, a very simple way to break things down and all the evidence-based recommendations in this study within one picture. So yeah, so braces aren't too bad, ankle supports, um, not too bad, NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. If you can take them, take them. Um, yeah, so I like those, I like those abbreviations, pretty easy to understand and you can kind of slide in. I think if pa patients are shown that, that image, it makes quite a bit of sense. So, um, yeah, you can email me or, or, or message me if you want that article. Quite interesting. So it gives uh, quite a few recommendations and goes through in more detail. Um, those are the experts in the study, so I don't want to be saying anything incorrect. Um, yeah, so I think it's that framework could be used pretty much for anything, which I like. So that's can be transitioned to different types of injuries. Um, yeah.
that's my bit for today. If you have any more questions, you can always shoot me an email or you can send us a message on the Pursuit account. I will upload it, this on YouTube for anyone who's missed it or anyone who wants to watch it later. Um, yeah, and then give us feedback in terms of other times that we could do this going into the future, whether it's a weekend or evenings, because we want to keep doing this. We can do bigger topics and just kind of combine things together. I think it's, again, important to do. So yeah, let us know for no problem, Shane. Uh, thanks for <laughs> attending. And yeah, so let us know any feedback and then we'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.